Aloha Friday everybody, Kamaka Brown here on the Sandwich Island Social Network's production of the Aloha Friday show and uh, we're so pleased that you decided to spend a little bit of time with us and big mahalo to Brittany Paiva for providing that uh, beautiful theme music. You can catch Brittany Paiva on YouTube, on uh, Spotify and uh, many of the uh, the song uh, Port portholes out there. Uh, Brittany Paiva. So good, yeah? Try listen, try listen. Woo! <laughs> uh, we love Brittany, we do. Um, so welcome to the Aloha Friday show. It is a series of interesting, fun conversations sharing the lives and journey of people in our island community, wherever they may be. The Sandwich Island Social Network is a nonprofit organization serving Hawaiians and Hawaiians at heart away from their island homes, and we gratefully accept tax-deductible donations to support the work we do in the community. And as you see in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, it says sandislands.org. That's our uh, website that you can find out exactly how you can support the work that we do right here uh, online. We are the Sandwich Island Social Network. So, our guest for today, oh my goodness, she is in the green room right now. And uh, in the green room, we have some special stuffs just for her. So, uh, why not uh, join me in welcoming to the Aloha Friday show, Lucy Wiedemeyer. Here she is. Aloha, Lucy. Aloha, Kamaka. Oh, I hope you enjoyed. Did you enjoy? We, listen, we went all the way, special, 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 just for you, from Anna Miller's in Pearl, Pearl Ridge. We know that Charlie loved his banana pie. So we get banana pie over there, the sushi platter from Kozu, uh, and then we get water in there. I hope you enjoyed it in the virtual green room. How was? Was good. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and no calories, too, right? That's right. <laughs> oh my goodness uh thank you so much for joining us uh, on the uh, aloha friday show and we to our listeners i know we have guys uh, guys and gals that have real good ears you're going to hear a slight echo but we've been working on it and that's the best we can do so we have to work with that uh today uh the many hoonies are always uh, being uh uh, Kolohi over here. So <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I, I have to I have to welcome you, and this is our tradition, Lucy. I know this is your first time on the Aloha Friday show, uh, but we do have a welcome. Uh, as you see uh, in the trees behind me, we have many hoonies in the trees, and they welcome mm. our guests with the Portuguese conch shell. Uh, that's the Portuguese conch shell. Um, we do have others in the back over there. There we go. So we get the Portuguese conch <laughs> You have been officially welcomed to the Aloha Friday oh, show. Honored. I am so honored. Yeah, for real. For real. For real. I love it. So, full disclosure, you know, I went to Roosevelt High School, which is up the block from Punahou, which is your alma mater. You and Charlie went to Punahou High School. Uh, we were on the other end of Nihoa at the slopes of uh, Papakulea. Uh, and uh, I know the statute of limitations is over, but we did creative um, uh, uh, destruction of Alexander Field uh, every now and then. Um, and so uh, <laughs> we, we went over to the track, Alexander Field. We would dig up the track. Uh, so um, the, just a cre creative mischief, we call it. So a kalamai, sorry about that, okay? We, um, we hope that um, we're forgiven. Um, this many years longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Lucy, tell you know, I'm going to say Punahou High School. What comes to mind when I mention your days, you and Polynesian Hall of Famer Charlie Wiedemeyer, uh, an inspirational and legendary uh, Hawaiian 
uh, in the sports world and in the uh, you know the motivational speaking world? What comes to mind when we talk about you and Charlie? And I say Punahou High School. Oh, so much comes to mind, Kamaka, and I have to say I am just. So honored to be a part of this Papuli show. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what what's fun about Punahou is that Charlie started at Kamehameha. Ah. And when his brother Herman was the one who pulled him over to Punahou, of course to meet me, right? That's the only reason. But um, he, did, he did not want to go. Not want to go. But... Um, Herman's son, Dougie, was there, so the guys all really um, gelled with athletics. You know, that's where he excelled, and it was just kind of magical, you know, as we look back on our time there and, you know, the old stadium, uh, you know, with football. And, of course, he played basketball. He played baseball. Um, such an athlete. He could beat me at jacks. That was tough, <laughs> jacks, but, you know. Uh, but then to be propelled, you know, to a college field. Yeah, there he is. Cute, yeah? <laughs> uh, um, to be recruited um, to play at Michigan State. He loved the idea of playing in the Big Ten. And you guys all know Tommy Kalakukui um, was the one who instigated Michigan State because he had been wow. a grad assistant and uh, with Duffy Doherty. So that little Irish guy would come to Hawaii and recruit. You know, he got Baba Pisa, Dick Kenny, you know, Iolani, Farrington, and now Punahou, uh, and then more. So the transition from, you know, the beautiful Punahou and that kind of protection, the Ohana there, to a huge university in snow country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here is... Uh, Aloha kept one saying, Imua Kamehameha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. I have to tell funny story. Yeah. So after Char Charlie was diagnosed and we had, when he first was told what he had and that he had a few years to live, he didn't want anyone to know. And two producers from San Francisco uh, happened to be in the islands at the time that, um, Blaine Geisen, our nephew, uh, who played at UH, you know, phenomenal athlete, um, a sportscaster called us and he said, oh, Blaine gave me your number and we need to know what is wrong with Charlie. Is it, is it cancer? Is it something we need to know? And very reluctantly, Charlie shared um, through me, of course, that um, it was Lou Gehrig's disease, that he had a terminal illness um, and we said, okay, just maybe a sentence in the sports section, just, you know, a few sentences, maybe a paragraph. And anyway, next Sunday paper, front page. Oh! <laughs> oh! And my husband was so hoo-hoo, he was so angry. But I said, you know what, it's, it's done, it's pow, it's out there. And now people know you don't have to pretend. Oh. And two producers... We're on Kauai, and they got the paper, and they went, oh, my. So they went back to the mainland. They're from San Francisco. And they called us and said, we want to do a little documentary. And Charlie said, no. So embarrassed that, you know, the ability to do things was mm -hmm. diminishing greatly. They spent six months asking, asking, asking. And <laughs> finally he said, you know, if I could help just one person, okay. And they filmed us, they won an Emmy. They filmed us for seven years and turned into one more season. The documentary, yeah. Yeah, One More Season is an award-winning documentary. Uh, if any of our friends would like to see it, you can go to YouTube and just put in One More Season or Charlie Wiedemeyer and it is there free for you to watch. And um, it is uh, quite a production uh, as well. Oh, here we have Pu'uvai dropping in. There's Pu'uvai. She's part of our ohana over here. Mahalo for dropping in, Pu'uvai. Aloha, she's Joy. Saying, uh, she's saying aloha. She's one of our uh, our ohana here. Aloha Cap says, aloha no, aloha yes to my auntie. 
I love the control. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> love it love it here is um a dear friend of mine marty burns is a retired high school football coach here in southern california and uh so sports is his thing he goes aloha kamaka and lucy i've been looking forward to hearing all about charlie and your life together much aloha yeah uh, mahalo thank you um, Marty is a uh, huge, uh, lots of uh, young Polynesians coming up in Southern California playing football, mm -hmm. and he's been mm -hmm. inspirational on a uh, high school level for a lot of these kids, and um, uh, this was pre-pandemic. Uh, I happened to be down in the area where he was. I said, hey, let's do lunch, and we ended up at this Hawaiian food restaurant, and there's this young Samoan uh, uh, a gentleman sitting next to me, a big kid, you know, and, I, and Marty introduces me to him. Uh, he is now going to college back east uh, and decided to spend part of his summer with Marty here. Didn't go back to Samoa. Spent some time here because he was so connected to Marty as his football coach. And uh, they do keep connection even after the high school years. So Marty is a great That's inspiration special. to young athletes. Marty Burns. Thank you, Brother Marty, for jumping in over here. Uh, and one more, Kay Bennett in the East Wing of the Holly saying, Aloha, Ohana. He's popping in right there. <laughs> uh, and Thyra Abraham, part of our family. Aloha, Lucy. Mahalo for sharing your story about Charlie. Uh, Thyra is a great supporter of the Sandwich Islands uh, Network. So the, um, the story, you, the, there's a, a book. Oh, by the way. Uh, Charlie's Victory is a book that you can find on Amazon. If anybody, I'm really old school. I, I know the digital you can read. I love the smell of paper and opening a book up. I'm just really <laughs> old school. So if we have any old schools out there that would like to read Charlie's story, um, written by Charlie and Lucy Wiedemar, it's called Charlie's Victory. And you can find that on Amazon as well as uh, on YouTube, One More Season. And then the movie... Quiet Victory. Tell us about. Uh, you said that was that was the one. Was that the one that took seven years, or w was it the documentary that was? Which one were no, we talking about? No. Okay. Uh, no documentary was seven. The okay. <laughs> the movie. Um, well, you know, to follow our Kapakahi story, <laughs> um, you have to know that um, Charlie's last year of head coach was a championship game. And it was just, it was crazy. So the year before, we had had a, a nationally ranked football team. They were f incredible athletes. And uh, in the end, a bad call robbed us of the win. And so, and my husband was barely 95 pounds, and we just didn't think he would make it. But he, I said to him, got to have one more season and the next year he's on a ventilator they uh, and that's a whole nother story but out we go onto the field and that night it was it was like it was it was surreal it was so beautiful and in the end we won and there was a hollywood producer on the field and he said, I want to make a movie. This, this, is, this defies anything that I could even make up. <laughs> so then there was that pursuit. And it, it was, Kamaka, being a part of Hollywood and movies is, um, you have to look at it as an adventure because poetic license is alive and well. And when they cast Michael Nori as Charlie, we're like, really? He's tall? Uh, Charlie liked that, you know, <laughs> handsome guy, slender. <laughs> and, and, and in the movie, they let him have one sister. I'm like, what? <laughs> he has five. He has five. Five fabulous sisters that spoiled him rotten, I will say. Yeah, love him too. But for the movie, and then they cast Pam Dauber in my part, and my husband said, oh, I think I can play my own part. Wasn't that thoughtful of him? 
Yeah. So, uh, and Pam, Pam wanted to know, oh, do I have to go blonde and I have to do this? I said, no, 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 no. They said that the essence of the movie was to inspire and encourage others. And that's been our life. You know, once, once, once God got a hold of us and said, okay, I'm in charge of your life. There's a plan here. Kamaka, it was so different, so amazing, still tough. But when you can look forward and know that there is that plan, you know, for each one of us. And I get to speak still to football players. Wow. I'm still a part of the a part of the team, so to speak. <laughs> Don't miss a game. You know, and we have our, our all-star game. I've got the, the big poster ah, behind me. Uh, every year, uh, we raise funds for ALS uh, and cancer. And it is astonishing because these young men, you know, they all have stories. They all have tough situations. And so I'm inspired to hear their stories and to share, of course, our story. Wow. Here's, here's Nancy, Aloha Kamaka, and Lucy. Been looking forward to this. Nancy again, <laughs> <laughs> part of our Ohana here uh, as well. And uh, here's Marty. He says, it's so awesome to have two Wiedemeyers in the Polynesian Football Hall of Fame. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Their legacy. The, the was... oldest and the baby. Right, because because Herman is the oldest of nine. Yeah. And then um, Charlie was the youngest of, of, of the nine. Uh, yeah. Marty says their legacy will live on to hundreds of thousands of visitors uh, at PCC, yeah. which is down there at uh, in Laia uh, on Oahu, the Polynesian Cultural Center yeah. as well. Yeah. Very special. Yeah. Very special. What an honor. What an honor. And I love what Jesse and, to, and all those guys are doing to encourage the young men, the young Polynesian men. It, it's astonishing. Yeah. Let's take a look at this right now. Charlie Wiedemeyer, Hawaiian. How many of us can say we are inspirational, truly inspirational? Charlie Wiedemeyer could say that even without the ability to speak. Charlie Wiedemeyer was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, when he was 30 years old. At the time, according to family members, he was given one to three years to live. Charlie Wiedemeyer lived another 34 years, truly lived, changed lives, inspired a PBS documentary, a made-for-TV movie, inspired anyone and everyone who came into contact with him and his wife, Lucy. Charlie Wiedemeyer's story began in Hawaii, where after a stellar high school showing, he earned a football scholarship to Michigan State University. After marrying Lucy, his high school sweetheart, the couple moved to Northern California, where Charlie Wiedemeyer took a job as a high school teacher and football coach. Even in the throes of the disease, Charlie Wiedemeyer coached him up, taught all of us something too about perseverance and unconditional love. It's a blessing to induct Charlie Wiedemeyer into the Polynesian Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> so beautiful, so beautiful. Uh, what an inspiration and uh, an amazing, an amazing legacy um, Charlie has. And uh, here's Marty going, oh, chicken skin right now. <laughs> I know, right, bro? <laughs> I think I had chicken skin on my chicken skin. That's okay. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, la, la. <laughs> Here's my brother, Kavika Kahiapo. Aloha, Lucy. Oh, love and nice. blessings. Oh, love, love, brother you. Kavika. Thank you, Kavika, for popping yeah. in over here and uh, dropping in and sending your aloha. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned about, um, the, you know, what I'm hearing is Charlie, uh, didn't do well in the limelight. That was not his thing. He, he, he w wanted to be behind the scenes like a coach, coaching, and they were, they were the mm -hmm. stars, and kind of did a lot of pushback you know, on it. Um, mm -hmm. And your encouragement and, and, and to say, you know, uh, this path that we're taking, this journey, uh, will be inspirational to others long after we're both gone. Uh, and that continues to be true today, isn't it? Um, 
what, what you continue to do. Yeah. yeah. It's extraordinary. When we were first asked to speak at a camp for teenagers, we thought, what are we going to say? And we simply told our story, you know, basically of, of not giving up. And Kamaka, when we were POW, all these kids lined up, kids who looked, you know, perfectly healthy and fine. They each had a story. They each had a sad story to tell Charlie what they were going to deal with theirs because look at him, how he deals with his issues. Amazing. Truly, yeah. truly. And it's gone from that to businesses. Um, I spoke, um, let's see, last time we were home to a businessman's conference and you know, I shared, I said, you know, with Charlie, he was a perfectionist, you know, even like what Jesse Sapolo was talking about, how, you know, these guys, these fabulous athletes, they're perfectionists, they're uh, dedicated, they're competitive. Um, but we had to really back him out of that mindset because he was losing the ability to do everything he loved to do. You know, he couldn't hold a ball, he couldn't hold a pen, he couldn't hold a cup. He couldn't shave himself, you know? And so we had to say, but you're still you. You have so much to offer. You have so much to encourage these young men about. And of course, we're out on the football field and I'm reading his lips and he tells me to tell the running back that his grandmother could run faster than this kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, and and I want to write a book on, on on funny kind because people cannot ever imagine that someone who couldn't move, couldn't walk, couldn't talk, even breathe on their own could be so funny. And of course, he loved to tease. And that's, you know, the Hawaiian way is teasing. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 His favorite thing to do. So it's something that, you know, helps people stop being so hoo-hoo about everything and you know look at the bigger picture and how we can make a difference and what it is that keeps you going and as you know our faith is our rock solid foundation and so we know there's a much bigger plan and we're just a little manini <laughs> not an opihi a manini <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> Aloha Kappa, she goes, and grandma was fast. And here is Kevin Wiedemeyer. Aloha, auntie. Ah, my brother Kevin. Mm, ah, Kevin, love Kev you. <laughs> Kevin is my brother, lives in San Diego. He and I had lunch uh, on Tuesday, right, Kevin? He came pick me up at the hotel. And uh, we had a nice lunch in Old Pound San Diego talk story. Uh, and um, he, uh, his dad, uh, Ken, was uh, Charlie's uh, brother. And so um, yeah. he goes, yeah, my auntie. I'm so, so proud of my auntie. And uh, in fact, uh, he says, oh, and uh, yeah, Marty says, Kevin is fast too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as I was going through, you know, I was doing a little bit of due diligence last night, going through some things, and what stood out was Charlie's sense of humor. Your, 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 and that, that little, you know, twinkle in his eye and um, that smile. Yes. Even though he was, uh, you know, um, in pain, uncomfortable, and going through that, yet his sense of humor uh, shined through. I saw, um, I had his picture, and I forget where it was. I said his, the, his Christmas, the Christmas parties at the house. Were. Oh my! Tell us, tell us, about, tell us about the legendary Christmas parties. <laughs> uh, well, it was actually a white elephant. You know, so okay. many friends. We didn't want to have you know everybody have to bring presents. So we said, you know, just wrap whatever, and whatever was quite wild. If it was wearable, <laughs> yeah, I had to wear it. And uh, oh, oh, it was just uh, you know laugh all the time, and something that. Uh, I found that when people can laugh in the, his presence, it, it calms them down and helps them sort of cope with someone who can't do, you know, what a normal person can. So it was a two, two way street, a really wonderful way to keep Charlie going, allowing his uh, <clears throat> sense of humor to be front and center. 
but it also um, helped people to come and to be able to laugh. And, yeah. you know, he would, he, and he would tease anyone. I, I can't even tell you a few of the stories that he, <laughs> that he did. Oh my goodness, yes. And of course, I'm, I'm the one that has to say it, right? <laughs> if it if it's if it's not good, then you know it was my delivery. But if it's good, then you know the credit goes to obviously. <laughs> so Charlie, he had it made. You know, <laughs> either way, it was was no not a not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha Cap says, I'm so blessed by and proud of my Ohana. Love you, Sister Auntie. Mahalo Kamaka for sharing that video. Uh, yeah, we have about one or two more. If I think we'll, we'll have time to get to it as well. But uh, thank you, Aloha Cap, for coming and uh, joining us. And um, we love your comments. Keep them coming. Oh, uh, Kevin says, it runs in the blood. Are you talking about running fast? Or are you talking oh, about <laughs> no, his, his dad, his dad was off the charts hilarious. When those two would get together, it was like, oh, my goodness, you guys. Oh, it was really just wild and, and, and uh, hilarious, you know. Make fun of everyone any which way. <laughs> Um, no, it was always good. Pool of Ice, uh, talking, because uh, 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 we all know, uh, Kevin, we're all friends here. Your uncle is beautiful and an inspirational human. Pool of Ice, talking about uh, Kevin's uncle, Charlie Wiedemeyer, uh, who uh, we are uh, sharing stories about today. Um, and uh, Kevin says, yeah, the Wiedemeyer trait is make fun. <laughs> exactly. Well, in fact, I don't know if you know who Dave Drabecki is. So Dave Drabecki was a pitcher you know, for the San Francisco Giants and uh -huh. um, lost his arm to cancer. Uh -huh. And uh, so we got to be good friends. And one uh, afternoon, my husband had me say, Dave, let me give you my left arm. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's too tan for you. <laughs> so Dave says, aha, I'll take your arm and work on my tan. <laughs> we call that handicap humor uh, handicap humor yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. oh so funny um uh marty burns over here is just laughing away he's enjoying this <laughs> yeah you mentioned you know you mentioned um a common thread with you and charlie and with your family is uh your spirituality yeah. your your connection you know, um, uh, your beliefs, how did that help you through it all? Uh, what was... Okay, you're going to make me want to cry, Kamaka. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, astonishing. So, you know, Charlie was brought up um, in the Catholic Church, and he was an altar boy and, you know, just a sweetheart, humble, humble, humble. But when he was diagnosed, some people said... Um, well, you know, maybe it's punishment. Mm. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Mm. And so many people came, Christians came and just loved on us. And one night when he was 90 some pounds and he stopped breathing, we had to resuscitate him. And uh, the nurse explained what it meant to have a personal relationship with Christ. And so we both prayed that night and it was like a miracle. You know, he was just so, um, I can't even say comfortable because he was never comfortable, but, you know, just knowing that he was being used, I think is, is, is more the um, explanation that God could use him in a mighty way, much more than when he was perfectly healthy. And, wow. and that became, you know, the focus and just, you know, keep going because there's a plan here and I know where I'm going. I know heaven waits for me um, and he'll be able to sing again because he was a good singer. You know, wow. he could play the ukulele. <laughs> he was good at everything, that boy. Even the funniest thing is cooking. And that's a whole Ooh. other story. Ooh. Whole other story because Kao Kao, you know, uh, yeah. we always said if they, if they cut open his head, he'd have food on the brain. <laughs> but, you know, knowing, knowing that God is in control is just the best. Even when, you know, you have the pillikias and you have the, you know, things that happen, um, just know that there's a, a, a greater purpose no matter what. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mahalo for sharing that. That's beautiful. You know, uh, we're going to take a small time break 
Uh, and then we're going to come back. Uh, I've got a great uh, comment here from uh, Nate Jones when we come back. Uh, but uh, we'll be right back after uh, these uh, few messages right now. See you on the other side.
And we're back. Welcome back to the Aloha Friday Show video podcast with our very special guest, Lucy Wiedemeyer, from her home in Northern California. Welcome back. And uh, in the meantime, we've had quite a few of our friends have been popping in there. And uh, let's see here. First of all, um, we have, uh, oh, uh, Aloha Cap says, uh, the awesome word, Malama Pono, uh, talking about uh, about Jesus, about your connection, your spiritual connection, okay. and uh, <laughs> mahalo for sharing that. Yes, that definitely resonated with so many of our friends here as well. Um, Poo Vai says, love this interview, Uncle Kamaka. Me too. I'm having fun. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know. People say, oh, you're going to interview somebody. I go, no, we're going to just talk story. There's no script. Yeah. We just we just talk yeah. story. Um, uh, oh, brother Nate, mahalo for sharing that quote from Charlie. It's so powerful. Let's get to let's get to Nate's um, uh, comment here. Now, Nate Jones, I want a big shout out to brother Nate Jones. He's a production assistant and a talent coordinator for the Aloha Friday Show. Mahalo for all the work that you do, Nate. And so here he is. Uh, you see, Nate is a SAG, a SAG actor, and he has been out on the the uh, picket line uh, uh, today, and oh, he was out not there. Easy. I know. So he is out there, but he came in from uh, the, um, the the heat and wanted to drop in. And Nate says, "Good to see you again, Lucy. Mahalo for coming on. I love Charlie's quote. Pain and suffering is inevitable. However, misery is optional." And we get to make that choice. Ooh, that is so good. That is so good. Um, curious to hear about the time you and Charlie met Stephen Hawking in England. Ooh, share that one there, um, Lucy. Stephen Hawking. How much time do I have? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> well, it was... Uh... A, a, a huge delight. We had gotten to know Stephen when he would come to uh, Berkeley, come to Cal and speak um, at University of California, Berkeley. And so when he heard that we were coming to England, he said, you must come. And uh, and we had tea and crumpets with Stephen, uh -huh. quite proper. And he <laughs> zipped us over to uh, the professor's garden because he knows I love gardens. And... Uh, you know, we just had a very, very special time. I mean, his story was, his story was never really told. Um, the brief history of time, you know, all the things he's written, um, very precious heart. And how he coped with ALS was so different from uh, most everyone else. But he just loved Charlie and we teased and laughed. It was such a special, uh, special connection, you know. Wow. Yeah, I saw, um... In fact, one of the, I think it was on YouTube, I was, um, I saw some of that, you folks walking together and uh, yeah, yeah, talking yeah. together, right? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. On that uh, as well. Uh, but you know who we, have, we haven't talked about? Hmm. We haven't talked about our, our Keiki. Ah. And our Mo'opuna. Please. And they are so much a part of Charlie's story. Um, you know, our son, Kali, was barely five when his dad started to have you know trouble walking trouble picking up things and kamaki he didn't miss a beat that boy held his dad's hand helped him open the door um was known to help him shift the car when he was driving <laughs> that mama did not know <laughs> oh. and uh and today not only is he um an md He's a doctor, but he has four mo'opuna, so four Aww. children that are close by. And, and our daughter, who had a very hard time with her dad's illness. It was really tough on her. She was our singer. And uh, today, she's a mother of seven. Oh, my and goodness. She and her husband uh, are on a farm near, near me and uh, have animals and, of course, all the kids. And it's just a uh, huge blessing. Wonderful ohana. Oh, my. So, but yeah. they were, yeah, Eleven. very supportive. Yeah. 11 more puna? Yeah. 11. 11. Oh, yeah. Wow, you can count, oh, Rosa. I can boy. Count. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Just because I, I went public school, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, my favorite subject was lunchtime now. Come on now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. And while we're, while we're talking about food. Um, I, I, Flamingos. I saw, uh, Flamingos. Oh, oh. But I saw this and I wanted to share. It's just really short. And then let's talk about this. Here we go. In 2001, he was a guest on world famous chef Sam Choi's cooking show. Boy, let me tell you, the salmon is incredible. A lot of you at home can do Charlie's salmon, teriyaki salmon. Beautiful. For you. <laughs> Tell us about that time on Sam, when Sam Choi's uh, show. Uh, again, uh, there are a million stories that precede being on Sam's show. So, you know, we've always known Sam. What a, what a blessing. And uh, when Charlie would um, end football season, he would go downhill. You know, every every football season, he was concentrated. It was like endorphins, blah, blah, blah. But when football was pow, he had a hard time. So a friend brought a lasagna to us that she told him she made it in the microwave. Well, he was so intrigued, she came <laughs> over and did a, did a cooking show for him, and he was off to the races. Aww. Oh, my goodness. He didn't stop. In fact, he taught most of the grandchildren how to cook. He taught most of our nurses how to cook because it was like like football. I mean, he would come up with the recipes. You know, he would memorize, and then he'd have the nurses chop up everything. All Every single dish in the kitchen was used, but it was perfect. Every every vegetable was cut perfect you know he used to cut all my veggies for you know chop suey or anything else at home so he really loved being able to not only create with a lot of help of course but serve watching everyone eat he loved that people said "Ooh, he cannot eat how how come i mean how can he cook i said no he was looking at the bigger picture wow yeah oh wow wow that's amazing that's amazing. <laughs> I have I have another video here I wanted to share, uh, and I think uh, uh, all the Ohana will enjoy it as well. Let's do this. Growing up in one of Hawaii's toughest neighborhoods, Charlie's hard work and athletic ability paid off with a scholarship to prestigious Punahou Academy. An all-star in three sports, Charlie's physical talent was something to behold, and he was voted the Hawaii Prep Player of the Decade for the 1960s. It was at Punahou that he met cheerleader Lucy Dangler. It was love at first sight. They soon became inseparable, and as Lucy cheered from the sidelines, Charlie's athletic prowess earned him high school All-American status. After graduation, Charlie accepted a full-ride scholarship to Big Ten powerhouse Michigan State, where he joined fellow Hawaii teammates Dick Kenny and Baba Pisa. Although the smallest man on the team, Charlie made up for it with talent discipline and determination. A member of the 1966 National Championship Spartan team as a freshman, Charlie went on to play quarterback, flanker, safety, and wide receiver. Following his senior season, Charlie was honored to play in the East-West Shrine All-Star Game and the Hula Bowl. It was at Michigan State in his sophomore year that he and Lucy were married. The following year, their daughter Carrie was born, and soon thereafter, their son Kai. After receiving his master's degree, Charlie moved the family to San Jose, California, where he took a job teaching and coaching at Los Gatos High School. Charlie and Lucy's lives defined the American dream. A little house in the suburbs, a beautiful family, and an ideal job. Then in 1977, their American dream would turn into a nightmare. Charlie, what was your first reaction when the doctor told you uh, that you only had a year to live? Um, I remember this like my very um, confused surprise from a lot of fear at that time. And, um, you know, and tell him this really, really. If Charlie was stunned by the diagnosis, how would he tell Lucy? Devastated by the gloomy prognosis, but fueled by their never-say-die attitude, Charlie and Lucy vowed to take up the battle, not realizing the enormity of the challenge and the implications for their family. The dying will come, we know that. We're just not quite ready for it yet, 
but I think it's made us realize how precious life is. And I think it's, it's um, slowed us down a lot. We appreciate every day. And I think that's so special. <laughs> Trying to see past the pain, the Wiedemeyer's intimate battle for survival would soon bring hope to millions of people. Then in January of 1985, with Charlie hovering at death's door, an event takes place in their lives that changes it forever. Our nurse came in. She was fairly new to us. And she just asked if she could pray. And she put her hand directly on Charlie's chest and just prayed and asked God to clear his throat so he'd be able to eat, to open up his lungs, to allow him to breathe. And as she prayed, there was an overwhelming presence. I was there the night that um, Charlie had the prayer and the spirit was in the room with us. The nurse was there from the registry with us. She was praying for Charlie. And during the prayer, there was a presence in the room that was very strong. It was so strong that it was as though somebody was there, that Lucy had come home or we just looked over our shoulders to see who was there. And during the prayer, we were just so overwhelmed with the power that was in the room with us. It's difficult to describe. And when the prayer was over, we were all crying in realization of what had actually happened, that a miracle had happened, that God had actually touched each one of our lives and had come into Charlie's life to show him that he was there. Then as Charlie opened his eyes, he looked at the foot of the bed and we had an amaryllis plant there that had three buds tightly closed. And when he opened his eyes, all three were open. They were like little trumpets heralding. All of a sudden, Charlie could feel his throat clearing, his lungs clearing. And Charlie said it was as if there was an overwhelming presence right there in the room, standing next to him, telling him, just trust in me. Everything will be all right. The miraculous events of that day would help Charlie get through the toughest year of his life. As he goes through a series of life-threatening events where he stops breathing and is rushed to emergency. Finally, in July, again hovering near death, Charlie would undergo a tracheotomy to help him breathe. Then receive a ventilator to breathe for him. And finally, a feeding tube. With a machine breathing for him and nutrition at last, it was a new lease on life. Despite his desperate situation, he would coach the county all-star game from his hospital bed. And two days after leaving the hospital, make what some thought would be his last trip home to Hawaii. In the fall of 85, with a very young team that no one expected to win, the Wildcats take the league championship, make their way through the playoffs and into the state sectional championship game. Crews from every network are there to record this incredible ending to a miraculous year. piece really resonated uh, with me in terms of uh, uh, the linchpin, your spirituality, um, your your belief in a higher power uh, that has a plan, a master plan for it all. You know? Yep. And um, you, conti- you continue that, as you shared earlier, you continue to do that in your community and, and beyond. Um, and uh, that's the amazing, continues to be the amazing part of Charlie's legacy here really really is yeah well and it's it's fun because i 
still in touch with a lot of those players. You know, I just, one of them called me last week from, uh, from the 85 team. And, you know, they share with me the difference that knowing Charlie has made in their lives and how they've made decisions, you know, huge decisions on, um, you know, how to deal with something because of what they witnessed in, in their coach. Yeah. Here's Nancy saying, I'm crying. God is so good. He <laughs> will never let us down. Ooh, that's beautiful. Mahalo, Nancy. Uh, and Aloha Ket says, Me ke aloha pauole. So Christo me ohana, very special. Mahalo kamaka for taking time to share your aloha with my auntie, my sister, my friend. You have indeed honored them. Inua ike akua. Absolutely. What a, what a blessing and a privilege to be a part of of sharing of uh, the story um, yeah. and you know um, uh, a picture that you sent here and I, I wanted to make sure we, we, we shared that here uh, was um, this luau that the family enjoyed there are your two keiki right there um, that to the luau at Punahou we folks went back for uh, a celebration there yeah that's so beautiful um, and then uh, one more that I had here, and uh, let me see. This was, this was, yes, this one too. Such a beautiful picture here of the both of you. Um, and um, you could see a man with purpose and a man with vision um, that he shared uh, with us all. Wow. Smoke I way maka over here too. Goodness. <laughs> so, 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 so amazing. Um, want to say thank you to all of our ohana that dropped in and shared their uh manao with us here uh, on the aloha friday show if i miss some of your comments hey, kalamai, they were coming in really fast and furious uh, hey you can have a movie like that they were coming in fast and furious um and if i missed it uh hey, kalamai, i tried to grab all of the comments that came in over here uh as well um but um so there is a uh, is there a, a Charlie Wiedemeyer uh, uh, nonprofit or is there a, a, a foundation uh, that is out there? I noticed there was a Charlie Wiedemeyer Foundation. Is, it, is that still active um, going? I, was, I saw some of that no. online. No, okay. yeah, no. Uh, in fact, um, our, our daughter helped run the uh, nonprofit for okay. years until her family kept getting bigger. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so what we do is we raise funds for Golden West Chapter of ALS. Okay. So they are California and Hawaii. We have our Beautiful. big uh, walk coming up in September, Kapi'olani Park. Um, and I think it's the same day as the uh, Aloha Parade. So it's going to be... Uh, <laughs> It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a you know, party. Hopefully. Yeah, going to be a party. So, you know, that is something I'm so thrilled at what they're doing now for patients uh, with ALS. Um, you know, it, it's um, Dick Jensen, you know, had had ALS. That's right. And, uh, the giant yeah, Dick Jensen. It was tough. Yeah. It was yeah, tough. Yeah. Bless him. And, uh, you know, he's a Kalihi boy. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> known him since those days at the swamp. Oh, my he goodness. Sing. Dick yeah, Jensen yeah. And at the swamp. <laughs> Remember that well. Oh goodness. Uh, oh yeah. goodness. Because we, because we old, you know. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's very, very true. But um, it, you know, it's just I love it when I share the story. I tell the young players. I said, this is a story for you to share when you have, you know, some issue you're going through, some roadblock, some speed bump, or a friend. You mm -hmm. share about Coach Wiedemeyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. The story. Oh no. The story. Thank you so much, Lucy, for sharing uh, uh, the I'm stories with I'm us. Here. Good fun, good fun. And uh, <laughs> again, mahalo to all of our friends for dropping in and spending some time on the Aloha Friday show. Uh, as we said, uh, next week, it's going to be kind of interesting. Jan uh, Yonashiro, uh, originally from Hawaii, has been a San Francisco resident uh, for a number of years. Uh, she is on our show next week, followed by the following week, uh, Miss Hawaii 2023 star Dow Thurston, and then Keola Beamer, uh, we have Kupa Oa, uh, Jerry Lopez, and coming up in October, um, Rap Reppinger's 
wife, his widow, Lisa Clark Stone, is going to be on talk story about the great Ralph Repinger. Looking forward to that as well. And so uh, stay tuned with us. And as we said, all of our video podcasts get archived on our YouTube channel. So if your friends missed it, then you can go to the Sandwich Island Social Network YouTube channel. Catch it all again if you want to enjoy it one more time. We're going to say aloha, Lucy. You can go back to the green room. Aloha. Yeah. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoy that. By the way, still get any the of the banana. The pie. Still get the pie, right? Okay. Uh, they're asking for the <laughs> recipe. Aloha. <already. laughs> yeah. Aloha, Lucy. Thanks for joining aloha. us. Thank you. All <laughs> there right. she goes. Bye-bye. There she Bye-bye. goes. Bye-bye. Um, we'll see you all uh, next time on the Aloha Friday Show. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, God bless everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Have a safe weekend, and we'll see you next time on the Aloha Friday Show right here on the Sandwich Island Social Network. Aloha no! (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> We're off the air. All right. All right. <laughs>